Hi, everyone. How are you? Good evening or good morning, wherever you are. Um, I am Samantha Dion Baker, and I'm in my studio in Brooklyn, New York. And it is uh, seven o'clock here, so um, it's very nice and quiet and dark outside. Um, and yeah, I don't know how many people are here who know my work and know me, but for those of you who don't, I am an artist, illustrator, author, um, and graphic designer. Actually, I started my career in, as a graphic designer and then started drawing every day. Um, and then that sort of became my new career. So I still design, um, but mostly I do everything by hand. And um, my books, I have three books, well, two books. One is coming out in December and they're called Draw Your Day. The second book is called Draw Your World. And the new book coming out in December is Draw Your Day for Kids. Um, they um, will be available on Blick's website in the next day or two. They're not there yet, but you can buy them anywhere books are sold in the meantime. Um, and yeah, the books are about drawing, keeping a sketch journal basically, sort of drawing your experiences, um, what you see, what you do, what you eat, um, what you find interesting, what you think might help capture a interesting moment in your, your day, in your life. Um, I actually always, one of the things that people ask me all the time is how do you always think of things to draw? And well, because I simply draw what I do and what I see, I, there's always something. And even if you're just walking down the street and it's a, the same walk that you do every single day, um, there's always something new to see. And the weather changes or Somebody will drop something. Um, I have a game with a friend who we randomly see fruit or vegetables um, on New York City sidewalks and we'll take a picture and send it to each other because that actually happens. People will drop their apple or whatever. Um, but this time of year, there's a lot of leaves and I love leaves. I paint on leaves, I draw leaves. I, I love the colors of the leaves and so, um, today, I'm going to be drawing leaves that I, I saw on a few walks that I took recently. And, um, but the prompt, as you know, was to find something on your walk. And it can be anything, maybe something that you normally overlook or um, also the leaves that you see, so, or anything in between. Um, and so we'll switch over to my desk and I'll get started. And I'll share some of my sketchbooks with you and some of my drawings. And uh, yeah, we'll move over there now. Okay, so as, as you saw, um, for those of you who clicked on the shopping link that um, listed all the supplies that we're gonna be using, there was also some materials about, um, that were related to making a sketchbook. I actually make my own sketchbooks and so I have a stack of them here in different shapes and sizes. I always use black construction or this specific black paper that is a little bit hard to find that is not on Blick, but if you ever want to know about it, you can send me a message. Um, but this is covered with black construction Blick paper that I think was on the list that you can get at Blick and it works great. This I made small because I was going on a trip. So these are just, little drawings of a uh, recent trip to Paris. So you can see, I'm not, I'm not gonna stay on this one that long, but it's just like a little memory book. So that is small. Um, I, my normal size is this size. And this is sort of a good example of how I draw my days. So they're filled with drawings. This is one of the books that I recently finished and all of these paintings, pretty much all of them are painted with Derwent paints that you can see here in the frame. We'll be using those today. Um, I love them. This is actually gouache, um, but most, most, most of the other paintings are all done with Derwent paints. Um, and then I, when I'm finished, I put the date on and put it away on my shelf. And the beauty of making your own sketchbooks is sometimes you might have some offcuts. This is just a quick example of what you can do with them. I had offcuts, so I bound them. I don't know what I'm going to do with this yet, but 
it's fun to just make all different kinds of books. These are just off cuts of paper. So um, this book is the work book that I'm working on now. I'm working to film now. And it's basically, it's a busy season for us, um, a lot going on with our family. And my older son's applying to college and all sorts of stuff is going on. So I don't have as much time to fill my sketch journal. So I'm just focusing on one thing. And so I'm calling it like a snapshot journal. <clears throat> and this kind of relates to what we're going to be doing today, where you just find one thing and it can be something very mundane and simple and you know something you might not even think is that interesting. But once you paint it, it can capture a moment and a memory and it can become really beautiful. So these were some eggshells on the kitchen counter, pumpkins, and the Derwent Inktense paints, they're so amazing. I, I would not be able to get this with regular water paper. So um, I see somebody's asking, how do you bind your sketchbooks? I have a few tutorials, if you want to call them that. Um, they're basically just me making the sketchbooks on my Instagram, um, in my Instagram TV, so you can find them there. I just, it's just basically a sing, single stitch. I mean, I can't really give a lesson right now, but it's a very simple process. It's really not that hard. You just need the right materials. And um, yeah, anybody can do it. And you need to be able to be comfortable with like an X-Acto blade. And, um, yeah, there's, it, you have to, you have to um, definitely learn the process, but it's not hard. Um, Anyway, I'm just going to quickly go through this. You can see so there's some big things, small things. This is a, a storefront in Brooklyn that I passed. And there's you know a story behind why I drew this particular storefront. Um, we went apple picking. I just love the glass doorknobs in our apartment. And I've been painting them for a while now. And, different books. So I did a portrait of one of our doorknobs, my breakfast one day. And then here's some leaves. Um, we're going to be drawing leaves today. So I am obsessed with finding beautiful, perfect magnolia leaves that dry pretty flat so I can paint on them. So that's what that's about. This is a, a dog named Samantha and I she had a Halloween costume on that she didn't, <laughs> wasn't too happy about wearing it. It was a little small on her, so cute. An apple on my desk. This is the hot dog stand outside of the subway. And here we are now. So I'm going to start to draw because I don't want to spend too much time talking. So I've been taking pictures and I printed a few out. This was such a beautiful, perfect red leaf with a little bit of yellow. It's missing its stem. So if I draw this one, I might add a stem. These were actually not on the ground, but um, on a brick wall. And I love the way that these vines were changing colors. So I took a photo of that. Another really cool leaf. And I like that there was some moss growing into, in the cracks on the sidewalk. And then some more cracks and leaves. So I'm gonna just do an, a little bit of an assortment, I think maybe one or two. And I like to use soft pencils when I draw. This is a 4B. So I'm just going to start to sketch a little and I want to get to painting pretty quickly. So I'm going to make the sketch and sort of design my composition pretty quickly so that I can show you how amazing the Derwent paints are for a project like this. I think I'll put a crack in the sidewalk up here.
this is a pretty detailed crack. So I will I will add a little more detail as I go, probably with the paint. I like the long stem on this one. And it's a beautiful leaf. It's a very symmetrical leaf, so I'm sort of making sure that it matches from side to side as I go. And then I'm going to add another little leaf. I think the red one. I see a question came in. I'm going to answer that in one second. I'm just trying to get the basic shape of this leaf. Okay, the rest can be added when I add ink. Okay, I'm going to read the questions really quick. I didn't catch the first part. I make my sketchbooks. So they are homemade and some of the materials that you need, not everything, I, but Glick sells everything, but most everything is on the supply list for this class. The only thing I think is missing is a cutting board and an exacto um, and a ruler, which you will need. And I was on the page and I was, okay. Um, so people are asking what they missed. I shared my sketchbooks. I shared that they are actually homemade and I shared um, the inside of them, some of my finished drawings. Um, do I find that having the full set of 24 colors makes a difference? I do. I like having 24. Um, there's, you don't always need you know, more colors. It's actually nice to have a limited palette. Um, but for the intense paints, I do, I do like having all these colors. It is really nice. OK, now I have a fine line uh, pen. It's a Dermwent line maker. I'm using the 0.3. This is fully waterproof. You do have to wait a little bit before you erase um, and before you paint. So I'm gonna draw this pretty quickly. I 
usually sketch in pencil. Um, and now I'm just going by memory. I'm not looking at the photograph anymore. I usually sketch everything in pencil first. It's just the way I choose to. That's the way my process is. But if you want your drawings to be a little bit more loose and carefree, or you have the skills to you know, go for it without pencil, that's totally your choice. These cracks can really be defined with the ink if you choose to. Um, I do, like I said, I do want to get to the paint. So I'm going to be a little bit quick about this. And I'm just sort of guessing, I'm, like cracks are so fun to draw. Um, I'm, not, I'm not looking at anything right now. I'm just sort of having fun with it. I'm in the center of my sketchbook so that the thread is a little bit in my way, but I actually love the center spread so much um, when I flip through. And sometimes I'll even use the string um, as part of my, my drawing. This will all come to life a little bit more after um, with, with the paints, so. Now, this leaf is referenced right here, but it didn't have a stem, so I'm making up what the stem looks like. And this leaf, is kind of really beautiful too because it's not symmetrical. Actually, I made it more symmetrical than it is. See, it's a little more heavier on this side. I made it a little more even. Do I ever get drawer's block, like writing block? What do you do to counter that and get back to the page? Well, if I know my subject, I always finish. I don't get blocked. Um, but if you mean, do I get blocked as far as what to draw? I did talk about that a little bit in the beginning as well. And you know, if you if you just look around, there's there's always something. And if you want to draw, I always say when people say, "Do you, you know, how do you fight, you know, finding inspiration, or how do you how do you get inspired, or how do, how do you avoid blocks?" Um, I always say, if you really want to, and sometimes you just don't want to, you know, like your mind and your your thoughts are just going other places and you think you want to, but I don't know. If you really want to draw, you will find something to draw. So I always say, you know, sometimes you have to force it. We all do, but there's always something. I also have a um, paper towel here. You can use a rag, you can use um, paper towels, you can, um, the sponge here, uh, some people might use to blot, but I always, I always have something to blot my brush as I go. 
Now, one thing I don't do all the time, although I will hear because I kind of was off. I usually leave my pencil because I like leaving the sort of history of my drawing right there. So if you see a little bit of pencil, I, I, I like that. So that's just a style choice. So I don't, I don't always um, erase my pencil. That's up to you. I'm actually going to use the thickest flat brush to fill the background with some black for now. And you just squeeze these brushes. One thing to note when you're working with the Inktense paints is that they dry quickly. So you have to, you have to work quickly, which I don't mind, but um, it is something to note. They also dry completely flat, which is a bonus because you, they don't re-wet. So things don't get muddy. With watercolors, you can re-wet the paint. And then if you go back over and over, you can get you can get a little muddy. So I'm just doing a basic layer of black. right over everything other than where the moss is. There was green moss, in case you missed it, I can show, I can sh show you the photo reference in a minute. Now, the other thing to note is the color of the ink tents will seep into the paper and become a little duller. So what really I find so beautiful is layering, just continuing to keep layering this paint. It's so nice. The more layers, the more um, depth and richness you can achieve. I still have trouble imagining shadows. So that's an interesting um, question. Do I have any tips for imagining shadows? Well, if you look at reference and you look enough, you can, you learn, and if you paint loosely like I do, you, you learn, you know, that you, you can kind of sort of fudge it, <laughs> figure it out. Um, it's pretty forgiving with shadows. The, 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 the idea is that the light is always coming from the same direction. So I took two photos. I don't want to stop because this, as I mentioned, the ink, this, this ink, the paint, which is basically solid ink, um, dries, dries quickly. So just gonna keep going until I get this background and then I can show you my reference. We can talk more about shadows. Okay. So these two photos were taken at different places. So the light is sort of hitting the leaves in a different way. The shadow is sort of coming this way. So everything's falling to sort of the left side and, and to the bottom of the leaf. Um, whereas on this one, it's all 
on the right. So you just want to make sure that your shadows are the light is consistent. Although anything goes when you're making art, so. You want it to look realistic, then the light should come, should be coming from the same place. So I'm going to add shadows, start to add. And like I said before, this will fade a little bit. It will. As um, the paint dries. So I'm basically making this up. You seem to get, does the ink stop the watercolor from bleeding? across the lines. No, the ink doesn't is not a barrier. Um, no, and you seem to get a lot of mileage out of the dab of paint. Is that in the indicative of the intense paint? I think so. They're very intense. So it's the more, you know, you sort of blend the paint and the black is very, very rich and dark. I mean, they're very opaque. They can be um, more translucent, the more water you add, and you can get these really nice sort of washes similar to um, watercolor, but they're, they're, they are, that's what I love about them. They're a little bit um, similar to a gouache, but an acrylic gouache, they're like a, a less um, thick and opaque acrylic gouache, and I say acrylic wash because acrylic wash cannot be re-wet. It dries flat. So um, that's, they're very unique though. They're really totally their own thing, these paints. I'm just doing a little bit of green to get the beginning of, or like a subtle hint of this moss that's growing in the sidewalk. And there's going to be a lot of, a lot more, and I might not have a chance to finish, although I'm, I'm doing pretty well with time. There's going to be a lot of this sort of like texture and sort of little, I don't even know, little rocks in the, I mean, I got really close to the um, pavement there to take these photos and Sometimes it takes a little bit of layering and um, just experimentation as you go. To get the texture that you want. I'll do a little bit of this and then I'll start to add the um, color for the leaves because that will make them pop. What is there anything else anybody's asking? I can see anything new. So Do I, I mix my colors on the page? Somebody's asking. Um, 
No, I usually mix in my palette. This is actually, I can move that out of the way. Um, today, today, I'm pretty much using the colors as they are, but I usually blend right here on the, in the palette before I put it on the page. I'm, I'm pretty loose though. I don't, I'm not too, um, I don't know if, if there's a mistake or like a color that's a little off, I, I will just sort of figure it out um, as I go. Like that, this black went on a little bit too intense there. I'll just sort of blend it in a little bit. That's just how I, and this, this project is very in the, you know, this, this pave, the pavement, the New York City sidewalks, it's all just random. Well, you know, nothing has to be exact. I'm just trying to get sort of a vibe. And I will also add some texture. There's a lot of different colors in here. I don't know if you can see that. There's some little browns and some lighter parts. So that that I can add as well with the ink temp tense paints, you can you can add lighter colors on top of the, the darks, which you can't easily do with watercolor. Okay. Now I'm, I'm mixing some yellow and this yellow ochre and a little bit of red ochre to try and get the leaf color or close to the leaf color of this, of this one. I might have to let this dry a little bit so I can get some of the colors in these veins. Sometimes as I'm working on these paintings, there are 10 layers of paint. You know, it, it really depends. Sometimes it's one or two, sometimes it's a ton of layers. Someone saying they're very excited for Draw Your Day for Kids. I'm so I'm so excited too. I I am. Um, I just I don't think you can ever start too young with a practice like this. It is very exciting for me because I started drawing so young um, to sort of get my feelings out, and it gave me comfort. And then I abandoned it for so many years. And so coming back to it in my adult life just really reminded me how, how important it was. And when I was writing the book, also my writing style is, a, a, you know, I, I, I feel like it's for all ages. I'm so excited about it. I hope that it does well, we'll see. Okay, now this leaf is red and orange. I'm just going to sort of grab a little bit of each of those two colors and see what happens because it really doesn't matter. 
a little bit more red. But do you see all that black paint I was using? You see how gray it is? It sort of just seeped into the page. So um, to get some of those blacks in the in this sidewalk, I will be adding more layers. I typically draw from a photo. I would say I do. Hmm, I guess seventy percent of the time, because most of what I, I decide to draw is, you know, in, in a moment where I'm I'm not able to just whip out my sketchbook and start drawing. Um, but I do do a lot from memory, and I never follow the photograph exactly just like I'm not now. This is a combination of two photographs and just a little bit of what's in my head. And I, I never, um, I, I shouldn't say never, but well, really never, yeah. I, I, I really never use a photograph that I find. It's always my own reference. Occasionally, if I wanted to draw let's say that storefront that I shared in the beginning and maybe somebody was blocking the view or something happened and I didn't get a great shot. Sometimes I'll look up the store. That's a good example of when I might look on Google, but it's always a combination or, and I, I try really hard never to pretty much to always use my own reference. I have no idea if the stem is going to be, would be red, but I'm making it red. Okay, so now I'm going to get, grab some of this white. The white isn't super opaque, but it is. You can you can layer it on top and get kind of a nice highlight. And if I want to show some of those little rocks in the sort of ingrained into the sidewalk. I can just sort of make it out. I'm grabbing a little bit of this dark brown, which it's called natural brown, and I'm adding that to the black because there's a little warmth in some of the some of the stones.
Another way to get some of the detail in the leaves, which I might actually do, is pull out some of the ink tense pencils. And that also is a great way of getting all the texture. So I don't know if uh, you all have any ink tense pencils as well, but that is something you can incorporate into your the same piece because the, the pigment in the pencils, it's just in a different form as far as I understand. I hope I am saying that correctly. Um, so they work well together. It's just bound in a pencil um, form rather than as a, a paint. Did I use the intense pencils first? No, I used, I sketched in pencil and then I add a little bit of ink as an, to outline the drawings, the leaves, but I, I, I didn't do too much ink. Sometimes I add more, sometimes I add less. This was just a very simple outline of the leaves. And then I started with the paint. But I'm going to um, take out a few intense pencils in a minute and maybe work on some of the little veins and details in the, in the leaves to get some some more fine texture in there. Do I find the brushes better than non push button water brushes? I do. I love that the, um, the push button, the ease of that. I mean, you, yeah, I think you squeeze all of them. The, the placement of the push button and the way it works though, I just find it, they work better than a lot of the other water brushes that I've tried. Okay, so in my photo, there's lots of white dots in this one. There's a lot of white in here. This one is a little bit like grays and blacks. I see some whites in here. This is the sort of moss that I was st starting to touch on there. So I think the pencils will help. I have not pre-prepared this, so, and my range of pencils is, is a a lot. I have the, how many do I have here? 72, 72 colors, so it's a lot. Sometimes it's, it's great to have so, so many colors and, and, but other, you know, at the same time, it's, it can be overwhelming. It's, it's like, a, again, a personal, a personal choice. And it depends on what material and how comfortable you are with blending. And I guess with colored pencils, you want to get more exact. Because these are water soluble, I might not you can, you can either add the, the water or not. And I actually might, I might not for, for these for this drawing. It's nice to be able to get those fine little lines in there, details.
This one had a little bit of like dirt on it. Can leave the dirt off or 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 draw it. Kind of, I kind of like to include things like that. The, those imperfections, like the rust on an old lock, or that's what gives it character. So I don't know how the white pencil is going to work. As an experiment, to give those cracks some dimension. It's kind of working. This moss will be, will be nice to add. making it look a little bit more grassy. What do I use to sharpen the pencils? I get this question every class and um, I always prefer a long point sharpener. I'm sure Blick sells a great one. Um, I use one that has like a little clamp. It's, it's this, it's very simple. It has this like pull out. So if you ever see a sharpener that has that, um, it's, it's really, they're really easy to use and they give you a really nice long point. I like long points. This, you can tell this one was sharpened. This one has not been sharpened yet. This is how they come in the, in the set. I definitely use a gel pen. Yes, I have to add highlights and that would actually work well with, with this piece. Although I don't, I really want the leaves to pop. So I'm, I'm um, gonna try, I would, I would prefer to get as much of the richness and the, in the, the detail in that, in the sidewalk to be um, just with the paint. Cause the gel pen can, can distract. It's nice for like that really nice, um, like uh, white, white highlight right along the edge or the, um, you know, on, on like a cherry and you just want to make that white, white, white pop. But in this case, I really want these leaves to stand out. So I don't want the, white little stones in the in the pavement to to distract if that makes sense So as you can see, I'm, I'm really going over this whole background to really, the idea is to just 
mute that all down and darken it so that the leaves are the focus and they pop the most. How do I decide whether to stop or keep going? Somebody's asking. That's I don't, I'm not, I'm not totally satisfied yet with my cracks and with the and um, you know this this I want to I want to keep going with a little bit more. Um, I'm not referencing the photo right now. I'm really just using my gut and, and memory. So, um, and maybe the reason why I'm not totally satisfied with how it's looking yet is because I need to reference the photos. Um, I try not to look as much as possible, just to give things my own, my own touch. Um, I look at the photo very closely when I'm doing my pencil sketch. That's when, you know, for example, I wanted to get the shape of this leaf right. And that's when, you know, if, especially if you're, if you're drawing live from life, it's very important to just really look and notice all those details. And then it's just a personal choice of mine to sort of step away from looking and go with my with my gut. Getting textures and surfaces right can be so hard with watercolor. Mm. That's a really, that those, those are subtle marks. And sometimes if you just like sand on a beach, it, it's just like a beautiful wash of a sandy color. And then you add just little touches, little sort of blobs of, of, of darkness to, to get how it, you know, the footprints and the, the sort of movement and dents in the sand. Um, it takes practice. And I think you can achieve it with very little, you know, very little marks. And I find that so beautiful. This really, and you can use these paints like watercolor. You really can. I'm just gonna flip that over because I, I don't want to get muddy. Um, you really, you really can um, treat these like watercolors, but they, I, I find they're, they're different. And because of the differences, I use them differently, if that makes sense. I like to, I guess, embrace those, those differences. I'm going back in with the pen now. just helps to clean up the edges. Not a necessary step, but it's just, like I said, I'm going with my gut. And now I can I can maybe even outline some of those stones. Mm. 
And this is all just random. I'm really just sort of randomly getting some, some detail in there. I've decided not to add as much detail over here or not um, keep it sort of more around the cracks. I might change my mind, but it's just what I'm thinking right now. Where was the oddest place you pulled your sketchbook to draw? <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, I mean, I've done it so many times, but I, I'm the, in the checkout line. Mainly at Trader Joe's because the line is so long, or it used to be. <laughs> so I've done it. I've done it a few times in the checkout line at Trader Joe's. Um, just sometimes on the street, you know. Um, but usually, it's usually it's not so odd. It's like at a cafe or or. Um, at a restaurant waiting for our, our food. That that is a always that's a regular occurrence. Um, I'll draw as we're waiting for our food. My family's kind of used to it. Anyway, I could keep going on this for a while and just keep going and figure out how to get the texture right. I, I like making it random. It doesn't have to look like the photos. It's a combination anyway. All right, it's kind of fun to play around with it. Everyone can have their own textures and variations. And if you're doing this project with me, please share. I would love to see what you've created and I will share it all on my Instagram. Instagram has always been my biggest um, social media platform. Uh, but now if I share if I share my stories on Instagram, it goes right to Facebook. So if anybody here is more of a Facebook person or on Facebook, your pieces will get shared to this, my stories on Facebook as well. Oh, it's eight o'clock. So I think I should move over, I didn't even realize. So we have a few minutes if anybody wants to ask questions and I can just show my face. This is done for now. I will share it on my Instagram. Hi, I can't see who's here or what you're all saying, but 
if you have any questions for the next five, I can stay for another five minutes um, and answer questions. Um, go ahead and I'll, I'll, I'll answer them as best I can. And just a reminder that um, my Instagram is design, and the design is there because I've spent most of my early part of my career as a graphic designer. So it's a holdover from that. Although I still design, it, it might seem a little strange to people, like why does it say design? But at this point, I can't change it. So um, SDM Baker Design on Instagram, or you can just search my name. Um, do I ever use watercolor pencils? I do sometimes. I, I do, not, not very often. Um, and I use them a little similar to how I use them here and then blend them a little bit within. So I usually use them in conjunction with, with watercolor or the intense. What paper am I using? I'm, and this is on the, this is on the list as well. And the, the shopping list that um, is linked to the class. It's Arches hot press watercolor paper. And I use the white brilliant white, I think it's called. It's the whitest white. Um, and you can you can buy it depending on how thick you want your book to be and how you, if you want to work on single pages, um, you can, the thickness is up to you. I, in the books I use 90 pound because it's easier to find that. You can get more pages. Um, and I usually just do one stitch binding. So I'm not doing signatures. So I just, um, I just use the 90 pound. Um, and a reminder too, you can buy my books wherever books are sold, but they will be available on Blick soon. They just, uh, it took a little longer than we thought to get them loaded and ready to go. So I'll wait another minute and see if there are any more questions, but I hope this was fun. And I hope it's just a reminder that you don't need really, you know, a big idea or a whole conceptual, you know, idea to, to find something to draw. There's always something and it's right in front of you. And if you want to draw things as they are, um, that's great. Or if you want to draw from your imagination, just taking a simple walk around the block and opening your eyes to little details that you might normally have overlooked will just, you know, it just, it's, like even, oh, you know, like I said, like a padlock that's, that's, you walk by and you just always see, it's actually so fun to draw that padlock or the manhole cover at your feet. Um, on the back of Draw Your World is an electrical cover. Um, I draw things like that all the time. And yeah. Um, the cover is, is made out of a paper that is a holdover from my design days and you can't buy it by the sheet. So unfortunately, I can't really tell people where to buy it. Um, but th this book, this little, I, I found a lot of my books just with black construction paper that is also linked on Blick. So I use that just plain black thick construction paper as much. And you can use anything for the cover of your books. They certainly don't have to be black. They can be, you can use a cereal box. You can, you, you can upcycle something that you have. You can, you know, I don't know, tear apart a notebook that you love that you've already used and use the cover of that. I mean, you, you can get creative. It does not have to be black. Mine, I always make black just because I'm boring and I like them to look the same. <laughs> um, I have 24 set ink tense pencils. How do the pencils compare to the paint? Well, they're the same in a, in a lot of ways. Um, they just go down in pencil form. And then once you add color, they become really intense and vibrant. And then they um, sort of seep and adhere to the paper and you can't move them again. Like they, they dry flat. Um, and the same with the paints. So they work really well together. Um, it's, it's really up to you and what kind of work you want to create. How many sheets are in the small sketchbook? I usually bind together 
about 11 or 12 pieces of paper, and then you fold that in half. So that's um, 11 times four, because each sheet is four. Each sheet that get, gets bound into the page is four pages, if that makes sense. So for example, this center page is one sheet of paper, but it's one, two, three, four pages. So if you bind together about 11 sheets of paper, you get 44 pages, give or take. Um, so yeah, just, just know I'm available. You can send me a direct message or email me. Um, I love connecting with people and there's just so much more I can share. This is just, you know, one example of, of you know, sort of what I do, what I find keeps me inspired and, and keeps the world really beautiful because, you know, even on a bad day, you find a beautiful leaf on the ground and paint it and it kind of, it's, nice, it's just a nice practice. So um, I'm gonna sign off, it's 8.07. Um, please be in touch and thank you so much for joining. And I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Have a good night or